Welcome and thanks for checking out my channel. Today's video is about a what happens if India and Pakistan get into a nuclear conflict. So if you're following the news and you're watching the video close to it being published, India and Pakistan's um, long-standing border dispute, um, whatever you want to call it, um, is flaring up again. So there was terrorist act took place in the Kashmir region. Uh, they particularly seems to have focused and targeted on Hindus, asking those who were of the Hindu faith and then executing them. And this has been kind of a long-standing kind of conflict. First, there's the disputed regions that India has with Pakistan. They also have some disputed areas with China as well. And there is some ongoing conflicts with Pakistan and supporting or condoning um, terrorist types groups within their borders. And again, this isn't scope of the videos not to get into whether or not, you know, the truth behind whatever that stuff is or right or wrong on either side. The fact is that they're in conflict. India is threatening to cut off water supplies that they supply into Pakistan, which would cause a significant amount of fallout pun intended, to Pakistan. Um, so it's a huge concern for their part. And there is even threats of nuclear escalation making the news right now. Um, there was a recent article that actually, for the first time in a couple of decades, India's um, warhead count actually has surpassed Pakistan. Pakistan has about 170 warheads, nuclear warheads. India has approximately about 180 and so I took kind of the base in the simulation, the nuclear war simulator, corrected the forces to the best estimate based on the uh, Federation of uh, Atomic Scientists for 2024, um, changed the numbers a little bit. I did um, the base sim, actually included some surface vessels, which they said basically they believe as of 2024 are no longer operational. I did add to... Um, ballistic missile subs for the India side. So the numbers are roughly as close to accurate as our knowledge base. So the question is, okay, how would this turn into a nuclear conflict? Well, there's many, many different ways that could happen. And again, that's not really a scope. This isn't to say what will happen. It's what could happen under these circumstances. So under these circumstances, it's going to involve Pakistan making the first initial launches and India responding to those launches. I do have the Indian response to be relatively quickly. One thing to say, especially with, you know, if they're mobile, if, if they haven't dispersed their nuclear forces, they're very vulnerable, both sides, to a nuclear first strike, not counting the sub-launch ballistic missiles. Um, so, but there is a lot of vulnerability. When I did simulations before between India and Pakistan, that kind of, if you got, if you're able to hit the other side before they were able to launch, their counter strikes would be very minimized. Um, and this one, though, I'd set it to where they will launch back in a relatively quick time frame. Let's take a look at some of the uh, attack plans. So, broke this off. It doesn't really matter as much, but it is say that Pakistan striking first. Within 15 minutes, India making counterstrikes. Let's look at some of the trajectories. So, you see both sides. This is both counter force and counter value strikes. So we're going to see a large amount of activity around this. Um, some may question, okay, if they're already seeing Pakistan launching, why would we, or say we, but why would India target their nuclear sites? Well, you don't know if they're launching everything, if they're holding any back in reserve, if they have additional missiles that they could deploy onto those launch sites for second strikes. There's any number of reasons why you'd want to target the other side's nuclear forces, even if they are in the process of launching or having launched. So let's go ahead and stop everything for a second. Let's go ahead and run all scenarios. Let's go ahead and start at 10 times speed. So mobile launchers do take a little bit to deploy and launch. Usually in the sim, at least, that um, sub-launched and ICBMs will be the first to launch. 
and then you'd have mobile launchers take a little bit more time and then finally you have your airstrikes so we do see some jets taking off at this point India would have a mix I think most of these are the uh, Raphael's they do have some F-16s let's see here I'm sorry the Mirage not the Raphael's okay so we're already seeing some strikes taking place We have not hit the 15 minute mark due to their short time frame from launch to striking. It is giving them a distinct advantage. Okay, so India is now responding. And starting to start, you know, launching some of their own. They have taken a significant beating already. We see subs are launching here. You have airstrikes taking off. I'm sorry, make sure you see these sub launch ballistic missiles here coming through. I actually have a, one of those ultra widescreen monitors, but it only captures a normal size screen on this. So I gotta make sure we're seeing all the activity. Now we're seeing some of their surviving mobile launchers starting to strike. We are seeing fighter jets taking off. So even though it was very advantageous for Pakistan to make these first strikes, clearly it's not going to get them completely out of the water. Um, in fact, you're seeing a significant amount of strikes from India still launching. And it's Magnus. Come here, buddy. He's liking to make some cameo appearances in my last couple videos. Last video, somebody posted a timestamp and said, is that Magnus meowing? Sure enough, it was. So I think this is one of the areas that's most slept on for a potential nuclear conflict to break out. Um, I've always said that the likelihood of a Russian or NATO, Russian United States, or even something in the South China Sea is pretty low. But um, because of the number of warheads, the number of missiles involved, I mean, it's just suicide for both sides, all sides. When you have a smaller warhead count, and sharing borders, it would increase that risk. So if Pakistan felt that India was massing troops on their border to say, try to take a certain area, take a certain region, vice versa, um, could be any number of reasons why it could touch off. I still think it's a relatively low probability but with nuclear weapons, I mean, even a low probability is something you have to take a significant risk of developing and you have to take that threat serious. Let's go a little faster. I'm going to speed things up just a little bit. These bombers take a little bit of time, but we're starting to come back. Pakistani fighters are still going in. So Pakistan has a mix of their equipment. They've had longstanding ties with China. They've also procured equipment from the United States for quite a long time. Um, we see that possibly a closer relationship between India and the United States, especially as these tariff situations have jumped off. I'm sure a lot of countries would love to fill in some of the um, trade aspects if there was a void with China, but... Um, it's obviously questionable if any country could really fill in for China when it comes to the manufacturing side of things. Um, I 
What do we have on the Indian side? Uh, of course, enough India has Mirages too, Jaguars, Raphaels, their air based assets. Okay, I think everything is actually struck now, so everything's just on the way back. So let's go ahead and calculate casualties. So India has a much larger population, so there would be little doubt that they would absorb the larger amount of casualties. Percentage-wise, their population would be less because obviously they're a much larger overall population. So even though they suffered more casualties, almost 20 million to 14.7 million, percentage-wise, the Pakistan's impact on its population would be much higher. So 34.7 million casualties overall. 297,452,000 cancer fatalities. 10,000, almost 11,000 square kilometers evacuated. Let's see, this always takes a while because of the way it scrolls. Let's see if I can get two numbers. This is a little dated, but this has India's population at 1.3 billion. So almost 20 million loss, 1.3 billion total population. Pakistan, significantly smaller population. Both have quite a bit of mountainous regions, which would increase survivability you know, for those populations living there. Pakistan, we'd be looking at so 188 million. Definitely much higher percentage-wise. Let's take a look at some of the fallout. Let's just go long term. Because both of them deploy relatively small warheads, we're not seeing a ton of fallout comparatively, unless if you'd see like US, Russian, or even Chinese strikes, or even French for that matter. So most of their warheads are in that smaller. 12 to maybe 40 kiloton warhead range. Um, give a frame reference, about that 15 to 20 is kind of that spot where the atomic bombs in World War II were. So we'd be looking at relatively small ones. And so for a frame of reference, you know, say like the U.S., they have a mix of deployed weapons, everything from 6 kiloton, small yield, um, sub-launch ballistic missile warhead, up to, um, I think, 1.2 megaton on the um, B-83 uh, gravity bomb, with most of them falling in that maybe 100 to 400, 500, 450 uh, kiloton range. So certainly that impacts total number of casualties, the fallout, and everything in a positive light. So... Um, now, environmentally and other things, I mean, you see significant impact. You know, water's a concern right now. Obviously, it'd be even that much more so. So, huge impact overall. We'd see a higher amount of casualties as time progressed. But in each, at least initially, um, not, you know, end of civilization event. Although... A lot of government and major cities would have been tar you know, were targeted and would have taken a significant impact. You see New Delhi, Smoking Crater, Islamabad. Here, Mumbai, you know. So that would have a very um, huge impact even on these areas that wouldn't have suffered any direct hits, direct casualties from. So there it is. It's important that these events do not escalate because loss of life would be dramatic. It's not counting other impacts. So let's hope this conflict winds down relatively quickly and we stop ending up on this steer course where conflict seems to be growing around the world rather than shrinking. Everybody has a great day. Enjoy the video. Please like and subscribe. 
and check out i've been putting out some ambience videos if you'd like to sleep the ambience videos i got some great ones but me and my wife have been sleeping like rocks to them so highly recommend to check it out thanks have a good day